I'm Bruce Earl. Um, I'm one of the directors of Simple Accounting Services, and uh, thanks for tuning in tonight. I've run a few of these seminars in the past, and um, you know they've they've been pretty good. But um, we've all had to go to travel through traffic, and um, you know go out at night when it's been windy and raining and stuff like that, and it's a bit of a pain. So um, we thought we'd try this fancy online webinar. Um, we're supposed to be recording this, assuming that we don't have some uh, massive technical difficulties. Hmm? It says it's recording. Thank you, IT team. So we should be good. <laughs> uh, someone give me a thumbs up or something if it sounds all right, or a thumbs down if it doesn't. Oh, there goes a thumbs up. Woohoo! <laughs> Okay, um, yes, I mean, this also means we can reach a lot more people. Um, you know, I've, I've actually had quite a few people that have, last minute, they've said, oh, they can't make it, uh, can't make it tonight or whatever. So that, it's good that we can actually record it and they can watch it later. Um, that's quite good too. And it also means that um, chocolate biscuits, when we buy them for, for tonight's seminar, then I get to eat them all myself. <laughs> oh, I can't hear anyone laughing. <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah don't don't bother taking notes tonight um as i said we're recording it um and i've also made some notes that that i can um you know use when i'm presenting the, the webinar so we'll be able to circulate circulate those at the end of it for you all right um so let's rip into it um probably the first thing i, I want to sort of cover off is um, whether or not you should set up a company, okay? Um, so we've had this question quite a lot, um, I guess, because when, you, you know, when you're getting going, you're thinking, well, um, how do I even trade? Um, so yeah, this, whether, whether or not to be a company, there's no right or wrong answer. I've actually done um, written a blog on, it on our website a wee while back, um, and it's, yeah, there's no right or wrong answer, basically. Um, tonight, we're sort of focusing on contractors, you know, like IT contractors, um, film industry people, um, real estate agents, those those sorts of people. And you're not really running a business um, in that, you know, you're not buying and selling products or employing people or things like that. You you are the, the business as, as such. Um, and so there's a lot less risk. Um, so basically, in that regard, really, it's a case of um, it's personal preference, really, if you want to be a company or not. Um, a couple of ways of breaking it down would be if you're a um, if you're getting withholding tax deducted, say if you're a real estate agent um, or a, or a uh, working in the film industry, um, and a lot of the IT contractors now with the new withholding tax rules they brought in last year are having withholding tax deducted and if that's being deducted um, and that's working for you then well or you think it will work for you then being a sole trader is probably the better way to go um, and to me that's really might be the make or break um, if you're getting say, say if you were trading in a company and you were earning a hundred grand um, if you were through a um, a recruitment firm as an IT contractor, you might be getting fifteen thousand um, dollars deducted from you. Um, and that, but from the company. But the problem with that is that at the end of the year, when you declare the profits out um, to yourself, it's it's the company that's paid the tax and not you. So it starts to get a little bit messy. Um, so in that regard, it's probably the best to just go with it as a sole trader and get withholding tax deducted from yourself um, but you might be in the position where you want to be really aggressive and hold on to your tax money for as long as possible you know using offset accounts and things like that with your mortgage you might also have quite a few expenses or you might have um, other bits and pieces going on in the side in that situation then perhaps you might want to use a company um, yeah, so if you want to know more about that, have a look at the um, the blog I wrote on the website, and um, 
yeah, let me know if you've got any questions. Right. Um, so GST registration. Uh, so that's, I guess, the, the next big step. Um, with most of our contractor clients, your incomes, sorry, your turnover is probably going to be over 60000 a year, um, which will mean that you're going to have to register for GST. Um, there's a few options for GST registration. The, the first the first part is what basis you are, whether, you, whether you're payments or invoice basis. Payments basis or cash basis is if you is when it's based on when the money hits your bank account or, or leaves your bank account. An invoice basis is based on the date of the invoice. Um, say if someone invoices you 31st of August and you pay them on the 20th of September, it'll be counted in the um, August period if you're invoice basis. Okay. Um, and the vast majority of our clients are payments basis just because it's it's easier, um, easier to account for and it's fairer that you don't have to pay the GST until you've actually received it. Just having some technical difficulties. <laughs> okay. Um, and then there's the frequency that you file your returns with. Um, you can do it one monthly, two monthly, or six monthly. Um, generally, not many people do it monthly. It's just too much of a pain. Um, we find, well, I, I think that it, with clients doing it themselves, two monthly is quite a good option um, because it's more regular. Um, you can remember how you did it last time, and you've got smaller amounts of GST to pay as you go. Um, once again, if you're, um, I guess, efficient and you want to be aggressive with your taxes, once again, um, if you go for six monthly, then you do get to hold on to the GST that you've collected for a longer period of time. But obviously, you've got to go and pay six months of GST at a time. Um, so if you are doing it six monthly, it's very important to be on the ball when you're doing it. Um, so with your GST registration, uh, you have to register um, register for my IR file um, on the IID's website. Um, I'll just flick over to that shortly and show you. Um, that's probably the best way. Oh, look at that. It worked. <laughs> uh, so on the IID's website, So you go to, so through here, my IR file, um, and you click on um, register, um, and that basically gives you an extra part within your, your my IR file where you can do all your GST and stuff like that, and you can also use it for um, income tax and things as well. That becomes important if we're using zero later on when we want to um, send our GST returns to, off to IRD. I'll cover that quickly. Um, later in the, the session and I've also done a, a, um, a YouTube clip of it and it's on my YouTube channel uh, and I've got 12 subscribers at the moment <laughs> uh, so yeah if you go there can you subscribe to my channel please <laughs> um, so yeah so that's my IR file um, you just click on register and basically it's a case of following your nose um, Assuming the IID doesn't crash that day, put in your IID number and just work your way through the wizard. Um, oh, that's another point. Um, with a sole trader, your IID number is going to be your GST number. It's basically, it's identical. It's just you've got another sort of tax type attached to yourself. Okay. Um, also with GST, um, we've got a lot of clients, well, the vast majority of them um, are odd GST, <laughs> the, the vast majority of clients are odd here. Yeah. Now the GST periods are odd. Um, so they'll be due, uh, September is the next period, and um, they'll be due at the end of October. So I'll run a little, it'll probably be sort of 10 or 15 minute um, session on um, the GST returns and stuff from zero and how to file it. Um, yeah, but you could uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel and have a look at that video. Um, 
So just getting away from that and oh, focus back on me. Um, bank accounts and your accounting system setup. So basically, you know, if you only take one thing out of tonight's uh, webinar, it, it would be this. Well, I hope it is this. Um, and that is that you need a separate bank account for your business, okay? Um, you know, you need... Uh, I'll just get my props. Yeah. You need uh, business and personal FPOS cards, okay? So when you're at the checkout... Um, you want to be able to, you know, pull out the right card to use. Um, say, for example, you go to uh, New World and you get your shopping and you also get an extension cord and some printer paper while you're there. Uh, when you're at the checkout, pull out, put, put them through as two separate transactions so it records them. Um, if you do that, it starts, you know, if you've got this nice line coming down between business and personal, um, it shows that everything's tidy. Um, say if the IID come and audit you, um, and and you can demonstrate that you've got this line between business and personal, they'll um, they won't leave you alone, <laughs> but they'll be a lot happier with you and tend to dig not so hard. Um, it also makes it easier to budget. Um, you know, you might sort of get if you're getting a couple of grand a, ma a week or or you might even just be getting monthly payments, a lot of our contractors are. In that situation, you know, you might get 10 grand come in for the month. You've got to put your GST aside and tax and so on. And then you might want to pay yourself weekly, so you set up a payment of 1200 a week. That just helps you budget your personal life. So that, personally, I'm okay. Uh, we just need to focus on, I can get along with focusing on the work, and the tax is going to take care of itself. Um, so yeah, separate business bank account, you need to have a debit card or a credit card that's attached to it so that when you're paying for the parking meter or um, you know buying an ink cartridge online or something like that, so you can use those transactions and you, and you don't have to reimburse yourself later. Um, set up a tax and GST savings account and put money aside each time you get paid. Um, you know, there's, it makes for a difficult meeting for me and obviously for clients if they come in at the end of the year. Um, if I say, oh, here's, here's your accounts, you have made a hundred grand income, you've got $18,000 tax to pay. That meeting always goes a lot better for me um, if you've got 18000 in the bank to pay it. Um, and obviously it'll go better for you too. That's my dog in the background. <laughs> He's had enough. He's bored. He wants to leave. <laughs> oh, I think he just fell asleep. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so you got your tax and that saved aside. Um, and you need to set up a system of capturing and recording your invoices and receipts. Um, I'll talk about that in a little bit more in a second. And then obviously um, setting up, well, I've got here, setting up a zero cash book, um, particularly if you're going to be doing your own GST returns. You know, it'll cost you a little bit more a month, maybe another 25 bucks a month or 55 or I think 60 now if you're using the full product. Um, but it just makes it so much easier. Um, so you're yeah, getting back to manually like dealing with your bits of paper. Um, the idea is right at the start is that you get that, that whole system set up. Um, it's kind of, I use the term set and forget with clients. Um, so literally you, you get it all set up and then you get you can carry on with life. Um, so just going through that a little bit more. Um, if your expense is more than $50, you need to have a tax invoice for it. Um, Otherwise, you just need to prove that you paid it. So obviously, if you put it through the bank account, and it shows $8 at the parking meter, then you don't need the tax invoice for it. Um, most of your tool receipts now, they, they say that they're a tax invoice, and they've got the GST number and that on it. So, But just keep an eye out for that if it's over $50. Um, 
And the other thing you need to do is you need to be able to produce it if the OID asks for it. Um, so obviously we've got to organize somewhere to stick them. Okay, so we'll just run through a few sort of options for that. Um, there's the good old uh, the shoebox. Um, yeah, it's old fashioned, but it does still work. Um, you might want to make sure you get a new pair of shoes every year. Um, so it helps you tidy things up. Unfortunately, the shoes aren't deductible. It just so happens that you uh, got a free box with them. And uh, I don't want to see your uh, shoe box, basically. Um, you know, it might be full of bits of paper, but um, if, if we need anything, we'll ask you to, to fish it out. And I definitely don't want to see your shoes either. Um, the other option is, you know, you might have a piece of paper, uh, stick all of your receipts onto it and, you know, file them away in an e-slight file. Um, that's pretty old-fashioned as well. Um, now, nowadays lots of uh, suppliers send their um, invoices through electronically. You get PDF statements, so it's kind of like um, they, uh, you know, it takes care of it itself. It's always there if you want to have a look later. Um, so get as much of those sent through electronically. Um, you can use an app like, um, say, Zero Receipts. Oh, sorry, Zero Expenses. There's Receipt Bank and a whole pile of other things like that. Um, I'm going to... There's a few changes happening with Zero Expenses, um, in, well, at the moment. Um, so I'll probably come back to that at a later date um, once we've had a bit more of a look around the, the new Zero Expenses. Um, one that I quite use is, is I, I do lots of photos, um, even for example um, if I'm banking two checks at once at the bank, um, I'll put them on, the, on the, the thing at the bank, take photos of both the checks together and then just email it to myself, banking, and then so I can always look at who the checks were from later. Um, but yeah, once again, um, you know, I, I took this earlier. Uh, was actually from you probably won't be able to see that but it was from uh, about four months ago and already uh, it was just a thing from spotlight for something we got four months ago and already it's starting to fade and it's hard to read um, so that's why one of the big things for actually um, taking photos of the receipts so that we can actually read them you know you don't want to pull out the shoebox in four years time for the ID and have it full of blank paper um, that would make for a difficult day as well. Um, so yeah, take photos of it. Um, you know, some people's phones, you get them back up to your, your Google Docs or whatever. So straight away it's in Google Docs, but then it's all mixed up with everything, isn't it? Um, what I quite do is, I like to do with my emails is, uh, we had one recently, uh, a toaster from Briscoe's and it blew up. Um, and uh, so I jumped onto my email searched for toaster and it took about three minutes to find here's the receipt from a year ago for this toaster i took it into briscoe's and they grumbled and groaned because they said oh it's supposed to be the original invoice but obviously they gave me a new toaster um you know so it's could it's not just to do with ird you might want to take stuff back later and you need the receipts for it um Another thing within the zero documents, we'll just have a bit of a hoon around zero documents now um, to do with recording these receipts and so on. Um, now, hmm, oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's try that. That's better. So I'm just in my uh, my special email gmail address here um and what i'm going to do is actually i'll jump over to the demo zero um you see on, on everyone's uh zero file there's a little document tab you click on that and it pulls up your documents and you can see in here that's a picture that um i took of that spotlight receipt um while i was getting everything set up um and you can just open them up and there it is there as i said you know it's a little bit hard to read because it's quite old 
well, it's actually only four months old. So that's that. Um, now you notice here the um, email address, it's pretty horrible and you don't want to be typing that in anywhere, but you can copy it obviously. Um, so what I've got here, I'm just going to run this live test, uh, so hopefully it all works. Um, I'm going to copy the email address and go over to my um, Gmail account and uh, add a contact. Yeah, I've already done it. <laughs> so this is this is the one I've created earlier. Um, I'm going to uh, delete it. So I'll do it again. So essentially, you're doing you add a doc, add a contact, um, zero demos, um, and email, paste the email address, and save it. Okay. And then uh, come back to my Gmail account. <laughs> the dog's awake again. Do you just want to leave him out? Do you want to leave him out? <laughs> um, yeah, so I've got this invoice here that I'd sort of sort it set up earlier, and what I want you to do, what I want to do is show you um, how to basically upload it so click on the forward sorry I don't use Gmail very often forward to uh, zero demos and send okay so you can do this with any of your invoices you know your, your bill from Vodafone or Spark or um, the power bill or whatever um, send it through to that uh, zero address and I'll come back into here and refresh it and now we've got these new ones that have popped up that sent the PDF through okay um, of the invoice so I've actually um, been playing around with a client um, on a few of these and um, We'll talk about that a little bit more soon, just about when we're doing a full zero demo on how to, um, for contractors like film industry or um, IT people with recruitment firms and stuff, on how to, to work through the whole withholding tax and stuff like that. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's the basically the, the crux of it. There's there's a whole pile of ways to get it in, um, but I really think the good idea is to actually just get it all whacked into the zero file here. Um, you can even upload the files and um, or take a photo. Not that this is in fact that might work through the the webcam here, um, but because you can be doing this off your phone as well. So there's a number of ways to get stuff in, and I really think that recording stuff electronically in the cloud is the best way to do it because it's going to be there for you later um, and easier to find um, than your your um, than the shoebox. But yeah, the shoebox does work, doesn't it? Um, so that's that little part. Um, so I just wanted to talk about um, basically GST and tax and stuff like that. Um, So, how much GST should I save? Well, I guess the short answer is all of it. <laughs> um, you know, say if you're a contractor, you, you won't have very many expenses. So pretty much if you're getting paid you know, $150 GST from your, your income, then you'll have almost $150 of GST to pay. Um, so I've got this I've prepared, which is really earth shattering get ready and come back to that um, so yeah here we are um, so essentially say in June and July we got eight thousand dollars we invoice plus the GST and then that was the total amount so we have these each um, so we've received two thousand three hundred and twenty five dollars okay so if you're a contractor 
Um, most of the time, you're not going to have very many expenses you can claim. Um, you know, and some if you look at it, some ways it's bad because you can't reduce your tax bill, but in other ways you actually don't have many expenses. Um, so that's good, isn't it? Um, so if you look at this situation, you know, you receive two thousand three hundred twenty-five dollars of GST. Uh, we can only claim twenty-five dollars or so, so we've still got two thousand three hundred dollars GST to pay. So the short, basically, as I said, the short answer is if you're getting paid two thousand three hundred twenty-five dollars of GST. Put that in your GST savings account each time the money comes in. Um, then you know you're always going to have slightly more than what you need. <coughs> um, so that's the the GST side of it. Um, obviously, a big one is income tax. Um, And I guess being a bit of a, a smart one at the moment, um, how much tax should I save? Well, depends on how much you earn, doesn't it? Um, you know, and, but in many ways it doesn't matter if you're using a company or not. Because remember, if you're using a company, particularly if you're a contractor, you're pretty much going to have to put all of the income out into your own personal tax return anyway. So most of that contracting income is going to be charged at whatever your marginal tax rate might be rather than staying in the company at 28%. Um, so I've just done a little summary. Um, little tax calculator, bring that over here. Okay, so this is what we use quite a lot. Um, and you know I can I've got these this is a template you might want to use. So essentially say if you've had ninety thousand of income from your contracting work, um five thousand dollar allowance for expenses, your taxable income or profit's gonna be eighty five grand. Okay, so this is the tax on each of the different income um tax brackets, nineteen thousand dollars tax to pay. Okay. Um and it's quite good. If you're going to be on withholding tax, I really think in many ways, yes, it was a, a pain for all of us when it came in, but it can be quite a good solution. Getting back to my set and forget thing I mentioned earlier. So basically, um, $19,000 tax, okay, if we look further down, so um, your flat tax rate is essentially the um, tax divided by your taxable income uh, of 22.3%. But we need to factor in an allowance for expenses. Some of you may have $20,000 of expenses and some of you may only have three. So it can make a little bit of a difference. So if we whack in there just a rough estimate for what we think the expenses will be, and then what the calculation does is it's your tax bill divided by your contracting work. So this is what the um, recruitment firm or the um, production company is going to be deducting from you okay so you come down here and you might say to them well if you say we're looking at 21.1 percent if you get them to deduct 22 percent from you you'll get to the end of each year and you should have roughly um you know a small a small uh, tax refund say if you're getting 22 percent deducted during the year and the rate goes up and you end up with 110 grand Okay, it might turn out that maybe you should have had 23.2% deducted. But if you had 22% taken out, you're not going to be far off. Um, so I really I really like clients to use this kind of as a tool. Um, you know, it means you don't have to be mucking around pay, paying provisional tax and stuff like that, um, which is a bit of a nightmare. Um, so that's that um, side of it. Um, if you're not going to get withholding tax deducted, you can still use this little calculator to work out roughly what the tax uh, tax is, and then then you can because you don't want to be mucking around with all these, you know, the various um, tax categories. So basically, if you just work out roughly what it is, and then you need you know might think to yourself, okay, I've got to save twenty five percent or twenty five twenty four percent of my income. 
so that when we have that meeting, it's obviously a lot easier for me at the end of the year when I say you got 25 grand tax to pay. Um, another thing that sometimes gets overlooked um, is um, ACC. Um, so when you when you register for our GST, um, the one of the questions I'll ask for you for your your BIC code, your business industry classification code, and that's basically um, because your ACC rates are different depending on what um, industry you're in. Um, you know, if you're working in an office like me, or um, you know, you're an IT contractor, occasionally we do get paper cuts and things like that, but we're pretty low risk. Um, also working in the film industry, um, that's pretty low risk as well. But um, say if you're going to be Sam Worthington stunt double, then you might have to pay a little bit more ACC. Um, so, yeah, it's it's roughly about a couple of grand a year, um, or, or say 2%. Um, just to um, just give you a sort of a rough figure. What a lot of clients do is they might sort of add, um, work out what their tax, taxes need to be, be and then add a couple of couple of percent to the withholding tax rate. Um, so when we're doing the end of year tax return, it'll say, oh, you've now got two and a half grand refund, and then that refund will come in just in time to pay the ACC bill. Um, so that's a, a good way to look at it as well. And while we're talking about ACC bills, um, ACC can be a bit of a, a funny, funny breed to work out at times, but from what we've seen, once we file the tax return, I'll, I'll rephrase it, once the IRD assesses the tax return that we filed, they send your information to ACC, so ACC knows how much you've earned, um, and then ACC send out a bill. So if you sort of think a month or two after we've filed the return, you'll expect another little quick present from um, ACC being the bill. Um, that was the rest of that really um, yeah so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to um, jump back into our zero file and um, we'll have a, have a bit of a look around that um, so essentially what we want, once again what we'll focus on tonight is, is what you need to do if you're you know, working in a recruitment firm or working for a production company we're not going to talk about projects or, um, you know, a lot of the, the more, uh, so I guess, sophisticated or things of zero. Um, so if we just start off with, let's talk about invoicing, okay? Um, if you're going to use the invoicing in zero, um, you're coming in here, um, do a new invoice. You get the picture. Uh, so we might have um, 40 hours in the week, 100 dollars an hour. Because it really hurts when you fall off things. Um, exclusive. So essentially, this is the invoice here. Um, prove it. I'm just going through this pretty quickly um, before everyone falls asleep. Um, so that's the invoice done. Now we can do a few things. We can um, we can email it so it goes straight out, so straight through to them. Um, or we can print a PDF and attach it to the email that we send it out. Okay. Um, 
That's the, the sort of the nuts and bolts of doing an invoice. Um, most of our contractor clients don't actually do that though, because they have to be able to do an invoice. Um, you need to have the full zero product, which is uh, going to be sixty dollars a month soon. Um, For the sake of sending, um, you know, twelve invoices a year, it's not really worth the hassle. Um, particularly with a lot of the recruitment firms and um, production companies, they do buy created invoices anyway. Um, so in that case, we, um, you might um, say use a zero, an Excel spreadsheet, for example, if you want to just send. Um, you know, you just something like this. We've got these templates if you, if you want to grab them. Um, you just can send those through to you. Basically that just gets the invoice done and you can send it off. Um, where you'll need a proper um, data system is if you need to track if they're paying you or not. Now if you've got one client, you know, one contract you're working on, which is pretty much the same every week or the same every month, <clears throat> you don't really need to track if they've paid you or not because you're going to know. Um, but if you're sending 50 invoices a month, then you need a debtor system in that situation. We, we jump into the full system. Um, so yeah, the, the Excel, that, that will do the trick. <clears throat> um, but once again, most of the production company people and, and um, contractors and, and stuff, most of them get done for you um, by the, the recruitment firm and stuff. Um, in that situation, all we've got to do is deal with the um, income when it comes in. Um, <clears throat> when I've actually had one client earlier uh, where I was, in fact it was that invoice I'd sent through to here. What we, what we did was, um, sorry, where am I going? In the in inbox, <clears throat> in, the, in the documents. What he did was, because I'm going to be doing his because he's been stuffing everything up, um, I'm going to be doing it for him now. Um, and what we need to do is just to, to make it easier, once again, set and forget. What he's done is he's done a rule within his Gmail account where everything that comes through that says, um, let's say it comes through from his the production company and it says it's his pay slip or whatever. So he set a rule up that every time that comes through, it automatically um, forwards to me. Um, I've got a rule that automatically forwards it straight into his um, zero file. So without any of us doing anything, every week his invoice from his production company comes straight in here. Um, obviously he could just get the um, production company to send it straight to this email address or he could forward it and so on. Um, but yeah, that's one way to do it and then it's all there and we can see the information. That's if we're going to do it based on invoices, okay? What most of our people do is basically just a straight cash book, okay? <clears throat> so we'll come in here. Sorry. Reconcile. <clears throat> um, just go through this quickly. Things are getting on a bit. Um, Cooper Street Bakery. Okay, so on the um, left hand side here is what the bank information sent through to zero, and on the right hand side is what zero is going to do with it. Um, entertainment. <clears throat> okay, and then we click on OK. All right, so I'm just going to refresh the screen now and pretend it's the next day that we've come in. <clears throat> um, and you see, basically, it's remembered. It says, Oh, Cooper Street Bakery. Oh, that'll be entertainment. Okay. Um, so you'll find once you've been using it for a month or so, you just start coming in here and you go like, okay. Um, and basically, I know all of our contractors are really busy. If you spend, um, you know, three minutes a day or 15 minutes a week, that's basically all, all the time you should need to do on your accounts. Um, 
you know, even even if it's if you take the bus or the train to work, that those sorts of things. Um, waiting for a coffee at a coffee shop, you can because you can do it all on your phone. So jump in and blast it away. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you is so these rules here. Um, there's a rule. Basically, I don't like rules um, in general. Most of you should hardly even need to use a rule in, in zero because we like to keep things simple. Basically, it's a case of um, just using zero to remember it. You don't need to put in a fancy rule. Although I'm going to show you now one rule that can be really good if you're having withholding tax deducted. Um, this is probably just about the last thing we'll, we'll look at, I think, um, and then we'll call it a night. Um, basically, pull this over, and this has caused lots of problems, and it's even caused problems with last year with recruitment firms who were, basically it was their job to look after this, but a lot of them actually stuffed up what they sent to the IRD. Um, say, if we're looking at that, where you're getting 24% withholding tax deducted, um, you're billing a thousand dollars. Okay, so what happens is you you you're generating a thousand dollars of income. There's a hundred and fifty dollars GST on top of it, so that's eleven hundred and fifty dollars. Okay, um, they're deducting nine hundred and thirty six dollars. No, sorry, two hundred and thirty six dollars of withholding tax. So you're getting nine hundred and fourteen dollars at the bank. Now, what a lot of clients were doing is they were sending that um, straight across to the sales account. When they were reconciling in zero, um, so if we look at this one here for that e-bank deposit, they would just put that in as income sales there, and it would go automatically put fifteen percent of the nine hundred and fourteen dollars to GST, but it should have been fifteen percent of, of 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 that on top. So essentially, they were underpaying a lot of their GST. Um, there is a separate email, sorry, there's a separate YouTube clip on my YouTube channel, which you'll now all be able to see because you're all subscribed to it. Um, and uh, that, that de deals in, in more detail with how to do this. Um, but essentially, what this little calculator does is it works it backwards. So essentially, it wants to work backwards from the $914 that was banked using the withholding tax to give us these um, percentages, okay? Um, so if we go in there, and say we come into this fella. So we're creating a rule um, for this one. So you put in the criteria, so if it says that, then it's going to say, um, It'll do contacting income um, so we've got our little percentages worked out over here okay so we want 125.82 percent um, Holding tax paid. Sorry, I've done that all in the wrong way. Just testing to see that you guys are paying attention. So we have to use the ratios, the percentages. Um, Okay, so essentially it's going to gross it up so that it puts the right amount. It'll be a few cents out because we only had two decimal places, but that's going to be near enough. Um, and it'll record that properly for you. Now this is pretty much, for all of my clients, the only time they should be using rules. Um, I've seen clients that have got 70 or 100 rules and it's just not necessary. So essentially you come in here, 
um, each time and you see that it's now got this rule that it's, that it's going to apply every time and that's going to actually record it correctly. Um, we can obviously, you know, you only need to sort of set this up once, you know, set and forget. Um, so we can help you with that if you want and as I said there's a YouTube clip on it. Um, so I think we probably uh, call it quits on there. Um, thanks everyone for tuning in. Um, as I said, we'll be, um, hopefully this is all recorded nicely. <laughs> um, and uh, we might tidy the recording up a bit. We'll put that on YouTube as well. And I think the um, actual recording will pretty much automatically be available on Facebook um, probably later on tonight. Um, and if you're keen, let, let me know and I'll flick you the sort of the summary notes. Um, and it's got a few shortcuts on there, like um, obviously our blog site and um, you know how to make appointments and things like that. Um, yeah, if anyone wants more information, um, yeah, let us let us know. Uh, make an appointment. You know, we can have a Skype meeting or a phone call or whatever. Um, yeah. Um, and uh, honest feedback about the webinar would be good. Um, it's our first real one, and um, you know, if we need to make it better. Um, Perhaps not having the dog snoring and walking around in the background could be a good thing. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, you know, I guess that's one of the advantages of you know, being able to do this from home. And you guys are probably all mostly at home as well. Um, yeah, so yeah, thanks, thanks for tuning in and um, we will see you shortly.